Hello, um, here's Jane Goodall again, and uh, this time I'm going to read from this lovely book that I did with Michael Neugebauer, Jane Goodall, With Love, and a wonderful illustrator called Alan Marks, who's a great friend, and the inside cover is really splendid. It was great fun writing this book, and I want to tell you at the start that um, every single story in here is a real story. It's absolutely true, every single one, and there are ten of them, and it was really fun to write. So the introduction. In 1960, almost nothing was known about the way chimpanzees live in the wild, that was when I went to Gombe National Park in Tanzania to see what I could find out. Every morning I climbed up into the forested mountains before it was light and stayed up there until dusk. The chimpanzees were terrified of the peculiar white ape who'd suddenly appeared in their world, and for months I could watch them only at a distance through binoculars. If I tried to get too close, they fled. Gradually, though, some of them began to lose their fear. One evening when I got back to camp, Dominic, my Tanzanian cook, told me that a large male chimpanzee had arrived that morning to feast on the ripe fruits of an oil nut palm growing by my tent. When he left, he had snatched some bananas from my table. For the next five days, the same chimpanzee returned. Each time he took the bananas, I'd asked Dominic to leave out for him, and so I decided to wait in camp to see this chimpanzee for myself. As I had guessed, it was the handsome individual whom I had already named David Greybeard. Each chimpanzee is as easy to recognize as a human friend, and each has his or her own distinct personality. David Greybeard was gentle and calm. I shall never forget the first time he dared to take a banana from my hand. A fully grown wild chimpanzee who'd grown up fearing humans trusted me enough to accept food from my hand. I knew I must never let that trust be betrayed. It was David Greybeard who helped me to open the door into the magic world of the wild chimpanzees, for his companions observed his lack of fear and thus accepted me far more quickly than they would otherwise have done. David and the others have taught me much. Chimpanzees can, like humans, be very aggressive, even brutal at times, but they can be so gentle, affectionate, and caring towards each other too. It's not only we humans who are capable of love, compassion, and altruism, and the stories recounted here based on my experience with chimpanzees over a period of almost 40 years, demonstrate their capacity for love. And let me just show you a photograph of David Greybeard, who really helped me to get to know the chimpanzees much more quickly than otherwise I would have. This story is one of my very favorite, Mel and Spindle. When Mel was just over three years old, his mother died during an epidemic of probably pneumonia that claimed the lives of seven other chimpanzees as well. In the wild, orphans are typically adopted and cared for by their elder sisters or brothers. But little Mel was alone in the world. And anyway, like all three-year-olds, he was still drinking a good deal of milk. We all thought he would die. It wasn't even as though he was a robust infant. He was sickly and looked frail. For the first couple of weeks, Mel was a pathetic little thing. He followed different chimpanzees, begging food from them, occasionally riding on their backs. They were, for the most part, tolerant of him, but he had no special friend, no individual on whom he could rely absolutely for comfort and protection. And then the miracle happened. Mel was adopted by Spindle a 12-year-old adolescent male. 
The spindle was not closely related to Mel. Indeed, he'd never even spent much time with the infant before. Yet now he waited for the orphan during travel. He allowed him to ride on his back, or even if it was raining, or if Mel was frightened, he allowed him to cling to his belly. Spindle always let the infant creep into his nest at night, and in response to Mel's begging gestures, often shared his food. And Spindle would run to defend or rescue his small charge if the need arose. Why did Spindle adopt Mel? We shall never know for sure. Was it perhaps in some way connected with the fact that Spindle's mother, ancient Sprout, died at the same time as Mel's? Of course, a 12-year-old male doesn't spend all that much time with his mother. He's off with the adult males, learning about hunting and protecting the territory and about females. But even so, if his mother is still alive, he often returns to her for a while if the going gets tough. In her familiar presence, he finds reassurance and comfort. Is it possible that Sprout's death left an empty space in Spindle's heart? A space that was, to some extent, filled by his close contact with the small dependent infant. Whatever the reason, Spindle saved Mel's life. <laughs>